This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1644. How to do a one-arm push-up by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. Hey there, welcome to a Thursday edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is one of a few shows where we read to you from blogs for free so that you don't have to read them yourself. Now, on this show, on Fridays, I answer your questions. Remember, you can send me a question by emailing it to health at oldpodcast.com. Now, I have to admit something. I do like to humble brag on this show. Yeah, yeah, I get it. And I think I'm in pretty good shape, but I have never been able to perform a one-arm push-up. Now, hopefully, after hearing today's article and with a bit of practice, I will eventually be able to, and hopefully you can too. And so let's hear about how to get to that point and get right to today's post as we optimize your life. How to do a one-arm push-up by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com. One-arm push-ups are more than a party trick. They're an incredible feat of total body strength and underrated muscle builder. I'll break down the benefits in a moment, but first, a question. Have you ever noticed the amazing physiques of elite level gymnasts despite the fact that they train only with body weight? The vast majority of gymnasts could step on stage at a bodybuilding show and hold their own. This underscores the missing muscle building component the majority of lifters don't understand. Tension. Do one arm push ups build muscle? In short, yes. One arm push ups trigger three key drivers for muscle growth and training. One, Metabolic stress. The pump comes from keeping muscles under constant tension with incomplete rest. When you create metabolic stress, there's a buildup of lactate, hydrogen ions, creatinine, and other metabolites. This occurs because the constant muscular contractions prevent blood from escaping. It creates a pooling effect of these byproducts, which stimulates the signals for muscle growth. Two, muscular damage. Soreness shouldn't be a primary goal but a secondary response of challenging your body just past its point of recovery. Slight amounts of soreness create a temporary inflammatory response and release anabolic signals for muscle growth. I urge you to proceed with caution here. Muscular damage should be a byproduct of a strategic training program, not the primary goal. If you're crippled with soreness and it impairs workout frequency for performance, you're doing more harm than good. And three, Mechanical tension. The big daddy of them all. Mechanical tension is achieved by creating lots of, you guessed it, tension in your muscles. Lifting progressively heavier weights and doing so in a controlled manner adds the element of time under tension. This is the obvious option for building muscle, but hiding in plain sight is your ability to maximize intramuscular tension through manipulating leverage while using more advanced body weight exercises. All of which brings us right back to one-arm push-ups. A typical push-up from the knees forces you to lift about 49% of your body weight. Regular push-ups forces you to lift about 64% of your body weight. Elevating your feet on, say, a 24-centimeter step, now we're looking closer to 75% of your body weight. Now, how about a one-arm push-up? Frankly, I haven't been able to drum up the exact percentage of body weight you'd lift but let's use some logic here. You're lifting close to that same amount, meaning 75% of your body weight per arm, creating a substantially higher training stimulus with a one-arm push-up than you could with a regular push-up. There's definitely a level of skill involved that may prevent many lifters from being able to maximally fatigue all muscles involved in the one-arm push-up, but it's fairly straightforward to understand you're creating tons of tension in your chest, deltoids, and triceps when performing a one-arm push-up. What does the one-arm push-up train anyway? The one-arm push-up is a unilateral compound movement training a plethora of muscles throughout your body. They build your chest, triceps, and shoulders. Think of push-ups like a moving plank that also trains your chest, deltoids, triceps, lats, traps, and serratus anterior. As mentioned, single-arm push-ups place a ton of load directly on your chest, deltoids, and triceps. That's plenty to build muscle if they're programmed correctly. You'll also notice a deep soreness in your lats as the stability requirements of a one-arm push-up may shock your system. One-arm push-ups smash your core. 
A push-up is actually a moving plank. Each rep forces you to prevent extension or arching of your lower back. When done correctly, push-ups train your anterior core, your rectus abdominis. By removing a limb from the ground, like with a one-arm push-up, you're adding an element of anti-rotation. Superficially, this trains your obliques, which live underneath your love handles. More importantly, you'll be training deep core stabilizers, like your quadratus lumborum, to work double time to prevent unwanted movement through your hips and spine. Developing the ability to resist unwanted rotation can make you stronger in big compound exercises like squats, but also prevent rotation-based injuries from a rickety golf swing to shoveling snow. Your hips will be working double time to aid in stabilizing your pelvis as well. A step-by-step progression to learning the one-arm push-up. Few exercises can match the tension created in the one-arm push-up. Here's a step-by-step progression to work your way up to a one-arm push-up. For some, this will take a matter of weeks. For others, it may be months. Master each exercise and perform 10 perfect reps before moving to the next. One, hands elevated push-up. Two, dead stop push-up, meaning you completely stop with your chest on the ground between reps. Don't allow your hips to sag. Keep your core engaged at all times. Mark Twight calls this the perfect push-up. Three, feet elevated push-up. Four, one arm hands elevated isometric push-up. Lower the chest to the bench, pause and hold for five seconds, reset and repeat. Five, one arm hands elevated push-up. Six, one arm isometric push-up. Lower the chest to the bench, pause and hold for five seconds, reset and repeat. Seven, the one arm push-up. And eight, one arm feet elevated push-up. As you can see, this is a straightforward logical progression. You can begin the progression with the most advanced push-up variation you can currently do. Remember, get in 10 reps before you move on. You advance from one push-up variation to the next by adjusting the leverage of the push-up first, then removing a limb. This allows you to progressively build strength and stability. How to program the one-arm push-up. Relative strength. Because you're moving your body weight through space, the key here is high levels of relative strength or basically being strong for your size. The leaner and or smaller you are, the easier this progression will be. Dropping unwanted body fat while maintaining strength will lead to a dramatic increase in strength when it comes to body weight exercises. High training frequency. Strength is movement specific. The more frequently you perform a movement correctly, the faster you'll rewire your nervous system for optimal performance. I recommend training the most advanced variation you can at the beginning of your workouts or three to four hours apart from your main training for optimal results. Avoid excess fatigue in the beginning. To train a movement or muscle frequently, avoid going to failure. Training too hard too often will overload your recovery capabilities and prevent you from optimally recovering. Worse still, training an unfamiliar movement pattern of failure will result in technical flaws, teaching bad technique and increasing your injury risk. Leave a few reps in the tank, fully recover, and train the movement often. Once you've built up the strength skill, you can pile on the volume needed to grow. Slow down, create tension. Mindlessly repping out push-ups might feel cool, but the key to making any exercise more effective for building muscle is to maximize tension within the muscle. This protects your joints as well. Take three to four seconds down, grip the floor with your hand, and squeeze your glutes and your quads to create as much tension as you can. The takeaway. Whether you're strapped for equipment or not, bodyweight training is an incredibly powerful tool. Instead of using it only for high volume work, pivot your approach and focus on maximizing tension, working up to the most advanced versions you can. Not only will you enjoy the process and the results, but you'll also leave equipped with the skills to get a great workout anytime, anywhere. You just listened to the post titled How to Do a One-Arm Push-Up by Eric Bach of bachperformance.com. You deserve a fresh start in all parts of your life, even at work. 
Take your team to the next level with a hiring partner that makes it simple to find candidates with the right skills. That's Indeed. Instead of spending hours on multiple job sites hoping to find candidates with the right skills, you need one powerful hiring partner that can help you do it all. Indeed is the only job site where you're guaranteed to find quality applications that meet your must-have requirements or else you don't pay. I love that Indeed makes hiring all in one place so easy. With Instant Match, over 90% of employers get quality candidates as soon as they sponsor their job post, according to Indeed data. Start hiring right now with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at indeed.com slash health. Offer valid through March 31st. Go to indeed.com slash health to claim your $75 credit before March 31st. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. After reading Eric's article, I think I know where my weak spot is, my lower back. Holding the plank position for a long time has always been a struggle for me. I often feel the muscles in my lower back start to give out before anything else. It's definitely an area of weakness, and I do take time to strengthen those muscles, but I have to be careful since I've strained my lower back multiple times doing other activities. Luckily, the step-by-step progression Eric mapped out for us seems to be safe and well-balanced. So with this as a map, I may just be able to one day accomplish something I've never done before, the mythical one-arm push-up. And maybe using the same type of progression, I can do the even more mythical one-arm pull-up. All right, that wraps up today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow for another Friday Q&A and where your optimal life awaits.